Um, I want to start a new section here. You've heard me talking about the, uh, the, tw the se 12 secret houses of Yang, or some, sometimes they're called rings. I prefer secret because in Australia a ring is something else <laughs> entirely different. I think it's a pretty universal uh, phrase, the ring. So we call it the 12 secret houses of Yang. As I said, these houses were only ever taught to the inner club or the inner school. Yang Shaohu only had three students in his inner school. And when my teacher came to him, he only had two. So that's how exclusive the inner circle club always was. Now I've, I've slowly introduced some principles from the first three of these houses slowly along the way without actually coming out and saying these are the secret houses. But what I'm going to start teaching now is the actual house that you learn. And this, this may, may take a number of years, but I think it's essential for people to know it for fear that they fall into the trap that most Taiji people fall into in that they think it's some sort of a competition. The third house of Yang was entirely to do with the way they do joining hands. I won't say push hands because I used to always get a slap over the knuckles when I used to say push hands because there's no pushing in Taiji. Push hands was only ever introduced the way that most people do it now as a red herring, literally as a red herring, to put outsiders off the real deal, in other words. All you have to remember with push hands is what the classics tell us. And if you diverge from what the classics say, so anyone says, oh, you're not doing real Tai Chi, you say to that person, does your system adhere totally to the Tai Chi classics? And if it doesn't, then it's not real Tai Chi. The old masters never wrote down or never transmitted the Tai Chi classics for nothing. The classics were one of the only things that weren't a red herring to outsiders. You have to remember that the Yang family in particular, this was their own family jewels. This was their precious gift that they had. And so there was no way they were just going to throw it out for everyone to learn. The first person who did that was Yang Qingfu, and many people even say that he died of a curse for doing that. However, he actually gave out much of the wrong information because he didn't want to give the family jewels away either, so he invented a new form, and so we have Yang Ching Fu's form, which is a fantastic form, mainly for Westerners, because it's a fantastic form for relaxation and just getting something, a little bit of qi gong happening. However, if you do it too much, which most Westerners wouldn't anyway, as Yang Ching Fu did, and a lot of other great old masters, you become yinned out, you get what's called yin dullness, and you die horrible yin death, which they all did, because they then forgot that it should be balanced. They forgot the old style, because the Yang Ching Fu's form was much easier, and there lies the danger, because Yang Ching Fu's form is much easier than the Yang Lu Chan's form. So they put all these little red herrings out. So nowadays, all you have to do is to look at the classics and all the classic sayings. Not so much what Yang Ching Fu said, but all the classic sayings that came before him from Wang Chang Yoi and Chang Sung Fang and all the people from Wu Dang, from whence Taiji has come, and Yang Lu Chan. You've just got to look at what all those people said. And one of the main classics is that uh, four ounces defeats 4,000 pounds. Now people say, how can you do that, you know, uh, Eli? And here is the whole crux of push hands. This is the secret of push hands, if you like. It's, right, it's in that classic, combined with the other classic of even a feather cannot alight on your shoulder without you reacting to it. So you go to someone's class and they say, let's do some push hands. Right. What is that? What is that? You know, it's bloody sumo. It's not even wrestling because you can't get a hold or lock on him, you know. It's just pushing each other out of a circle. Now that is totally going against 
any Tai Chi classic. It's broken all the rules straight away. You must never meet force on force. And what is that force on force? Even if I do this and Eli pushes, and we do the classic push, you've got to have this look on your face. The classic push hands. See how good I am? And then the old master will go, oh, he's got to leap in the air. You've got to leap in the air. You've got to tell your student first, you've got to leap in the air. The old master will go. And then, and then he goes, like this. You could probably push the old master over with one bloody finger, you know, but no one ever attempts to because he's the goddamn master. Even if we're doing that, silly push hands is what I call it, you're still force on force. Even though I'm giving in to him, I am actually giving in to him. You never give in to anyone. This is the total misconcept that Westerners have because some bod, Chinese bod way back said, you must yield to the force. What he should have said was, given the classic of four ounces defeats 4,000 pounds. That's what he should have said instead of yield. Because we Westerners said, oh, to yield? Okay, he pushes. Okay, I'll yield. They even went so far in the Cheng Man Ching school of doing these exercises where you couldn't push him over because you'd push here. You wouldn't have to push here. You'd push here and they'd literally do a back bend. But that's a great martial art, isn't it? fantastic martial art. So that's still what's called force on force, even though I'm going back and so-called yielding to the force, I'm giving in to the force, I'm not yielding, I'm actually giving in to it. You never give in in Tai Chi, and you're always moving forward in Tai Chi to defeat the person. So what the classic of, I, I, I tell, I'll give a nice little analogy of there's a train coming here, and I'm only four ounces compared to the train. So if I want to defeat that train, as the train comes pushing in, I just go like that, I stand my ground, but I just turn as it goes by, and then I shoot him, the driver, in the head with a gun. You see? So, and his foot comes off the dead man switch, and the train stops. So I've defeated the train with four ounces. So that's what it, that's in a nutshell what it means. I haven't moved, I haven't given in, I've just gone boom, like that. I haven't run away from the train, the train's going to catch me. This is running away from the train. Eli's running away from me now, now I'm running away from Eli, you see? He's always in control. Even though I'm going backwards, he's always in control, you see? And also, one of the classics that really sticks in my mind is that simply it translates as the centre does not move. The center twists, but it does not move. Now, a lot of people say, what the hell does that mean? Okay, here's my center here, here or here's my center. The wrist is regarded as your center. The center's moved this far, isn't it? Incorrect movement. This is the same as me going, okay, Eli's going to throw a punch. What I've done to him is, in in the transition from here to here, I've told him exactly what I'm going to do to him in that lateral movement. What I should have done was he just throws the punch, is that, you see? Now that's yielding, but also defeating a, th a thousand pounds with one ounce. That's what that is. So my whole body, my whole centre has moved about one and a half feet, two feet maybe if you do this sort of push hands. So you've broken the rule, you've broken several rules of Tai Chi already when you do this sort of push hands. The whole of push hands is based upon, as I said before, this. It's just that. Pung and hinge. I'm doing push hands now. That's it. See, Elliot's doing it. Very good push hands, Elliot. Fantastic. I, NASA, look, look! You're all doing bloody push hands! That's it? There you go, push hands. This is the way we defend ourselves. Push hands teaches us to defend ourselves like this. Not like this. I know Kung Fu. You exacerbate a situation. Okay, careful, I know my hands are registered with the police. What a stupid.